Well, we're at the time when there's no salmon to catch. It's uh, first days of January. And uh, looking at the lake here where we normally ice skate, uh, the crisis, the enviro crisis and the problems with the climate, it's pretty obvious. And uh, the only thing you can do, you can use the open water to do a few casts and it's good to see the lime go out. <laughs> but uh, it's cold and no fish to catch, so um, I think we will just uh, go in and uh, get onto the fly tying at the device. Now there's snow coming here, so uh, a bit cold. Headed to tie flies for the season coming up, and uh, I hope that uh, you will enjoy it more than I do with the cold here. So, uh, just join me. Well, we're inside, we got the fire plugs going and it's a lot warmer than outside. So uh, better to be here tying flies today than be on this little pier casting a line. Um, today, I'm gonna tie a butterfly. And uh, the butterfly, uh, they they saw that they slide or they, they, they came out first time right in the beginning of this season and ever since I tied a lot of them and many have we actually had a little tying contest for the butterflies too with a lot of contributors from all over the world um, I have a few favorites I fished the Zealand one, the Greenlander one uh, the Lionfly of course that I tied before a new one, a fiery brand really really nice for the uh, clear uh, water with a little humus on Patagorba but today I'm gonna tie uh, a British fly I'm gonna tie a willy gun uh, on the uh, kind of tying that we call butterfly uh, design where the feathers are put flat it's made from the fish perspective it's meant to have as much movement as possible from the fish perspective and uh, not as the classic flies where we're looking at them from the side these are meant to have a lot of motion this way so uh, i'm gonna start uh, here right now and it's gonna be quite complicated tying uh, uh, and you have to be careful and the smaller your time, the more difficult it is. Uh, but, okay, enough talk. Let's start tying here now. Well, again, it's a fly that goes in yellow, orange, and black. And uh, I'm going to do it today. Uh, I'm going to tie it on the fluorescent uh, medium uh, fit stooping with an extra small black one. And uh, first of all, uh, we're going to decide the length of the medium and I do it through our tube cutter and uh, since our the length of the tube is about half the length of the fly I cut this now uh, three centimeters meaning that uh, I'm gonna do a fly that is at least six it will be eight I think and I start by cutting a little edge on the medium to make the tubing hold the hold each other the medium to hold the extra small I don't need a really big one here cut a little angle also on the extra small and I just uh, oops pull that and just put these together Press it in on the needle, and our needle takes all the four diameters. And uh, I'm going to use a 12 0 thread. I tie 90% of my flies on 12 0. Uh, today I'm going to use a black thread, and I start by putting on some turns over this little edge that I cut here 
which will make uh, this two tubes come together without glue meaning it will still be flexible. Uh, I moved the thread back and I use a mirage material and mirage is fantastic it picks up the color from the background and to tie a mirage onto a fluorescent tubing is really really nice and I start by winding the mirage back saving about 5-6 mil and uh, turning going front creating a little tag here and the good thing it's a stretchy material so you can stretch it without any problems when I tie butterflies I, I need to think about not having too much materials that have a tendency to tangle with the really soft uh, ostrich feathers we're gonna tie in flat but most of them I tie without the tail um, but today uh, just to show you those of you who haven't seen it how I tie in a tail I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna put on a tail and I'm gonna use uh, since our tail fiber still is not on the market I'm gonna do a floral fiber but most of those I do without the tail take it flat tie it in on top one or two turns and I just fold it back doubling it make sure I go up with the thread over this point a little bit down on the mirage before I take my scissors and I don't cut it like this I taper from underneath pull and cut and it's good to have a really really sharp scissor and uh, luckily our scissors are now on the market both the crooked one and the and the straight one uh, okay make sure it's wide if it's not wide enough I can press it down uh, with my thumbnail but that looks good I think and then I go on and I'm gonna use our braid I'm using hollow braid two colors uh, two bright colors I go with the uh, magma yellow and the hot orange in flames and um, one I'm going to use for the body and one I'm going to use for for a ribbing and the good thing with the, our braid is it's so soft that you can uh, you can uh, use the same for everything any size of fly and also ribbing and bodying uh, so which one to tie in first I always start by tying in the one I suggest to use for a ribbing and I tie it in underneath one or two or three turns and then I tie in the body material which is the yellow one really like our yellow color here it's really really nice uh, take that away take this and make sure when I wind it, wind it on I cover up all the thread super important pull it hard and also with our braid you can overlap building a body that is tapered the tapered body with will be so much better looking than a body that is just straight and I tie it in underneath make sure I move the thread a little bit front here before I cut that way I can be sure that this can't slip okay so then I'll I'll take the orange one and I trim it spin it and I can uh, spin it down to the diameter I need and what I do here I put three turns on this try to put them even fish don't care but I do 
move back the thread tie it in and now I'm not gonna cut this off I'm gonna leave that there to put the rib on the front top of this so now it's time to put in uh, the first um, ostrich feather and on these butterflies the first one I just put one feather on and then I tried with two or three feathers in the front but I found a really nice way of doing it is to put in one feather at the joint between the two body halves and one feather in the front so I'm now going to start with the one that is the lightest one in color and uh, when it comes to ostrich they can be really really different some of them are have long straight very very soft feathers they give you give it you get a lot of motion on that one and some of them have uh, fibers that are almost 90 degrees out from the center and you get more volume and more profile to this feather so this is a matter of choice uh, I prefer to wind these on as hackles and to put these on as butterfly um, with a butterfly design and um, it all started I told you when I did lionfly it all started with these feathers that you find on the desk that is um, waste from winding on the top on a front tackle this on a fairly small fly uh, but uh, I can use that but I can also take a bigger feather like this and uh, I'm gonna use this now and if you look at this I can use the same one feather for many flies I can take start by using this top uh, winding it as a hackle I'm gonna take that away now but I can put it on as a as a front tackle this little tip would be perfect for a front tackle on a, like a medium sized fly and then I take this and I'm gonna tie this in and um, if I look at this uh, the fibers are a little uneven and that's almost good because it means that when these comes together it's gonna be a little tapered to it too I cut this off and make sure I cut it off so I have a little longer than I'm gonna tie in I can see it's still a lot uh, of feather to be used on more flies there so I take this and I tie this in flat on top like this if I need to I curve it over my finger a little bit And a little other trick I can do is that I can take a little plier and I can flatten this here just here to make it a little easier to tie in it's possible without but it's easier so it doesn't twist put it in on top take my thread and just tie it in look at it so it's flat and uh, that the fibers are coming out I I can't twist my vice here I need to twist the fly because if I twist the vice we lose uh, focus but this is how it should look like and uh, they should be uh, flat giving a broad profile and a lot of motions from the fish perspective so then I take this and I fold back the ribbing I go on with some dubbing should be here somewhere here we go and like on all medium and big flies I use glitz uh, glitz got long fibers it's really easy to dub on I just spin it on a little bit at a time hold back this and tie it in and the reason I do even on a big fly like this I do a body without a body hackle is that the body hackle will only mess up uh, the motion 
of the ostrich feathers. Tie this in, build it up. Make sure I put a lot of dubbing on so I can really brush it out. A little bit of time. And of course I don't use wax. Wax melts on 50 Celsius and on a warm day, this means the fly will lose its wax. Okay, let's say that's good. I hold back all the fibers and I tie in. I need to have three or four millimeters to tie in the uh, rest of the uh, wing and rest of the hackles and all the stuff. I, I don't want to have too much on the extra small. And then I take the same ribbing and I spin it and I put another two turns on. I try to keep uh, the five ribbings uh, from the classics um, just because it looks really nice and I prefer to have the three on top of the, the orange on top of the yellow it gets a really nice color mix there uh, when I've tied this in I fold it back like this and this way going back with the thread It can't slip and this is also super strong material our braid uh, is the strongest braid I've ever tied with actually okay so now we have a little bit of yellow here so it's time for us to get what is almost like a body hackle brushes now back on the market first ones we got in it sold out in two days but they're here they're the meanest brush there is picks up the fiber try to hold this back and you can see how I will create a really nice translucent big body without using any body hackle feather okay so I go on with next color um, what I do with on a willy gun is I like like most of my flies, I try to uh, work with the lightest color in the in the bottom and darker on the top, and the lightest in the back and darker in the front. I think a lot of uh, things with tying a nice fly is proportions and and how you decide to use your materials. See, this is one that one that I brushed a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Okay. So what I do here, I uh, create the same, uh, I was a little <clears throat> too little, create the same little feather here and I make sure I have uh, the length I need uh, to tie this in, I can strip this off. It was not good quality in the end. We need to have good quality on all feathers. I make it a little flat here too with my plier, makes it easier. And also very important when I have the dubbing here, not to have this stand up like this, but to have it follow and be flat, I need to curve this. And I curve it over my fingernail like this. I don't want to twist it sideways. I want it to be straight, but I want it to be curved. And I do it mechanically like this, meaning that it will stay even when it gets wet. And I put it on right on top of the fly, hold back the fibers and tie it in. Not too much dubbing here. Okay. And I very often need to adjust this with my fingernail see that it doesn't twist pull it and make sure that this is now put on flat on top of this and i'm gonna see i can take this away first i'm gonna see if i can show you this feather was not 100% straight, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, you will see 
what I want to create like this or even better I should show you from the fish perspective from underneath where you can see the yellow and the orange fibers coming out this blending together really nicely and creating a lot of motion so it's time for a wing and normally when I put a wing on, I start with a little bit of, uh, of the flash or angular HD, uh, but I don't do this here. I put the hair, first bunch of hair on first because I don't want the flash fibers to mix with those. I want these fibers to be able to swim and create that very uh, moving, extremely lively fly. Before I, I tie in the wing, maybe uh, there's a lot of you guys uh, sending, uh, show you a couple of things, sending us uh, mails on where to source materials. And uh, we've actually done the same now with the, with the ostrich, like we, done, we did with the peacock, where we put a, a wallet together. This is our biggest SOS wallet. And we put... Uh, the smallest one now uh, with uh, 10 different colors of ostrich, uh, 10 feathers of each and you will find it on our web now. It's 100 feathers and uh, I must say when it comes to ostrich there are a lot, normally a lot of bad feathers. Um, we think this is the best ostrich we've seen. It's really really good quality and the feathers are not too big. So you can use them on fairly small flies too. Okay, so on to the wing. What I do is I will start with the yellow wing and on all my uh, butterflies, my wing is uh, a lot thinner than on the normal flies. And uh, <clears throat> the reason is that I don't want the, uh, the wing to be in the way for these ones. We want to create uh, a flat fly with a lot of motion <clears throat> and I don't want to have a bulky wing that will uh, will mess up here so I take a very thin uh, yellow wing and I make sure it's about the same length that my body that my tail sorry uh, if I have a tail like I told you most of, of the butterflies I tie without the tail and it's really nice when the wing is it's sticking out between these uh, these fibers like this between the two halves of the two uh, ostrich feathers. But about the same length there, and I tie it in, and I will use my thumbnail, press it down on the sides, make it wide, a few turns, and I cut it off. Again, it's good to have a really sharp scissor. I will try to turn this again so you see how this wing is thin and it's coming in right between the halves uh, <coughs> of the uh, ostrich feather. Okay, and then I'll take a little bit of uh, angel hair and if I want I can use the HD first or I can do a regular angel D uh, angel hair sorry and I that one it's not good I start uh, by with a hot magma yellow one three or four fibers and uh, not too long they should be about the same length. Tie them in, one or two turns, fold them back, go back with the thread to secure them. This way uh, they can't slip. And also uh, I get the question, what what is best, too little, too much? And it's always better to put in a little bit too much because it's really easy for me to either pull these out or use my my cutter on the river when I swim the fly uh, to see if, if you know if it's too flashy if it's too little 
Well, I'm... Yeah, bad word. I'm not going to use it. Okay, so then I take a little bit of orange. It should be uh, uh, translucent, really curly hair. Should be a little bit longer. And uh, what I do uh, with my brush is I brush through, I take away this uh, woolly part of the wing and I, if I do it like this, it untangles really, really nicely. Move my fingers up. Just add a couple of bad strands, take those away. Make sure I have a good tapering. If I don't have it, up oh, a few bad ones here, I can just pull out a few of the strands and just create the perfect taper. Move my fingers up and tie this in and make sure now that this is longer than the yellow and also that it's longer than the ostrich fibers. This is to create the nice taper because the ostrich uh, is, um, they're not bulky, but from the perspective underneath, they will uh, uh, give some volume. And I don't want to have a short uh, fly that's not tapered. I want to have a really well tapered fly with a long wing. That will swim a lot better. Cut it off, always cut off between every bunch of material you tie in. And uh, cut close. A little bit of angel hair again. And uh, this time I used the hot orange from flames. And the good thing with these uh, hot colors we have, we have three is that they are full of phosphor and fluorescent uh, fibers. So when I take this, you can see the very strong orange ones. They are really seen in the water. Take a few, tie them in, make them about as long as the wing. One or two turns and double back. Spread it by pushing down my finger. I spread it over about half the diameter of my tubing. If I have a few that's too long, I can take them away afterwards, okay? So, now I'll put a little bit black on top. And when it comes to this pattern, I don't want it to be uh, a black fly, meaning that I'm really careful and not taking too much black. See if I can find something that is straight and looks good here and uh, I think it's 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 easy to take too much here uh, and to turn this into a black fly with a colored underwing I don't want that I want this to be a fairly bright fly uh, in bright colors meaning that if I have too much I take away some make sure I form a wing, uh, it's about half a centimeter wide, spread it out, make sure it's tapered and tie it in on top. Move this back, I need uh, quite a bit of this bunch here and just tie it in. Move back my fingers, Press down on the sides with my thumbnail and secure. Looking at this, see how if it's even. And it looks good, I think. There's a few flash fibers here. That was a bit annoying. But it's always better to take them away after or when I tie, when I go front in my tying. Cut off. Cut everything every time, like I said, and then we go on to uh, my favorite angel hair color, Nasty Rusty. I use it on a lot of flies, 
they mix so really nicely together with uh, with any any peacock and uh, those of you seen I know that I like to put a few peacock curls on top of the wings few of those tie them in make sure I uh, spread them one or two double back same way I think maybe I got one or two too many here uh, meaning I maybe afterwards I tying off or I can just take a couple of the long ones and I can start tapering down here uh, so I get fewer of the long strands looking good I think need to see so I don't press down too much of the hair and the wing on the side because if I do I take them away they will just hold back the motion of the ostrich so always when you tie you wind you a thread like this you press the material over to the other side what I do I put my fingers on and I pull it back and I tie in press down pull back so I get the straight wing otherwise it's very easy the fly will look good from this side and look uh, bloody awful from the other side so okay peacock and I think we have sourced super peacock feathers the it's almost as difficult to get good peacock than it is to get good hair and I'm really really satisfied with these this one is turning a little bit like that doesn't really matter I take uh, three to five normally and I spread them between my fingers like this make sure I hold it far away so I can tie those in like that put them on make sure they're as long as the longest strands here and I try to just press them down and tie them in and if I'm lucky they will not fold over sometimes one or two do like I have one here it's not folded it's just twisted down if they fall down I will just pull them out take them away and tie them in again when I know it's right I just secure and I tie it I cut off if I have a little angel hair here that it's very good to try to keep uh, this clean and uh, I said it before when I tie like here normally I have the light coming in here now I it's a black side here it's just because you should see this but if I turn it a little bit for you you will see how this wing is in the center of the ostrich like that okay try to have this um, good like that and then I take two jungle cocks I start with the one that's on my side and I told you before we were working on a new uh, jungle cock uh, substitute that will be softer and um, having more mobility than any of the feathers that are available today if you like I do now use um, uh, natural feathers make sure you use one with the situs and um, I said it before but it's a bit ridiculous to save wild fish with right hand and extinct birds with left hand so try to do this in the right way okay so I have this and I make sure my jungle cork I need to form this quite a bit over my fingernail before I tie it in and uh, it's a bit trickier to get this down on the side like we want the jungle cock to be uh, and they are tied in almost a little bit 
on top like this and actually what it does it will help and I, and show the feathers to the not only the fishermen but show it also to the fish a little bit so I know I had a fly that I tied uh, for tied a fish a long time ago it's a version of the red sandy classic one and on that one I tied in the jungle cock underneath turned the other way around to show it to the fish I don't think they care but it looked pretty cool okay so we are ready with the wing it's only the hackling and uh, to change this from being uh, the weakest to the strongest part I put a little bit of glue on here have to be careful of course and as you see I use support with my fingers before I put this on so I can uh, be sure the glue ends up where I want it to be okay so it's getting messy here uh, but we'll see and uh, now we're gonna tie in uh, hackles and I'm gonna do three front hackles and I'm gonna start with the uh, uh, with the yellow uh, soft tackle and I want one with fairly long strands and uh, then I'm gonna tie in two other ones and uh, super soft feather with a lot of motion to it and uh, these are uh, they will collapse if I don't use a cone and that was the whole idea be be behind the turbo cones that uh, what is it now 15 years ago or something that I came up with that idea I use uh, almost 100% turbos on my flies. I think they create a fly with a lot better motion. Look at this now. I do this yellow and I <clears throat> pull back, create a little triangle like this before I cut. Okay, tie it in and uh, underneath and when I'm gonna uh, tie this in, uh, I can use a hackle plier, but I can also just uh, double this little soft feather uh, by pulling down the fibers like this and tie it in by hand like this. Now I have to be a bit careful so I don't take too much hackles here. Uh, I'm gonna have three hackles, meaning I start with a uh, very thin uh, one or two turns of the of the orange one, and then I go on to using uh, sorry the yellow one, and I don't, then I go on to an orange one that is a little bit shorter in fiber, and uh, I do absolutely the same here. I just uh, create that little triangle always use support like I told you before I think it's a good trick I put the scissors on my finger and I just cut and uh, it makes me be really accurate tie this in and close to the other one and here I can use the plier it's a shorter feather and uh, our this is still a sample of our uh, hackle plier that will be with you in oh maybe when this film come out finally it's here and uh, the plier is really a good one it's heavy so I can let go of the plier uh, without uh, risking that the feather will uh, unwind or or lose the tension tie it in Make sure I have uh, this center here and try not to mix too much with these soft fibers. They should mix so it doesn't really matter much if one or another goes one way. But I hold this and I just tie them down. Make sure they are even and looking good and I think. And then I go on with the black one. 
oh I have a couple here uh, and uh, the black I need it to be really thin uh, some of these I put a really long black hackle on uh, but very few strands uh, on this one I'm gonna put one on that is a little bit shorter I'm gonna do two turns tie it in underneath and uh, secure it a few turns this is easy without the plier and I just double by holding back the fibers on the part of the feather that I tie in and uh, do my two turns tie it in again underneath and um, sometimes they can be a little bit uh, tangled and I can just untangle with the scissors or with my dubbing needle and um, looking good even super take my organizer talking about my organizer every film but I just love them and uh, now I can uh, decide I can do this uh, fly with an uh, orange or uh, yellow or I can do it with uh, that was too big with a black uh, cone and uh, you know our turbos comes in both brass and uh, tung uh, tungsten they come in three different sizes four six and eight millimeters i'm choosing to use a six here and i'm choosing uh to use the uh, orange or the yellow because of the black tubing uh, if i wanted to have the black i would have used an orange or yellow uh extra small fits tubing to get the good contrast between the two. Let's do the yellow here, okay? I choose the, um, the six millimeter, put a little glue, use support, put a little glue away from everything here. I don't want too much glue uh, in my hackle, so I don't want any. And I take the thread and I pick up some glue. The rest of the glue I will pull down by the cone, pull it down tight and take the thread away. Looking good I think and I take this and I now take the fly out of the vise and you can see how white it is and uh, it's a bit odd design actually cut off the extra small on about three millimeters and then I use a lighter oh, I had my lighter here thought I was prepared had everything on the table and on the willy gun you need to have a lighter in the willy gun colors of course and I just melt this down and I melt it down to create this little color the color that will hold the cone in place make sure there's a hole if I've done it right there's a hole Newton came out things wants to go that way if I do it like this it opens up nicely okay so what have I done here now willy gun colored butterfly does it have a few too long angel hairs yes it do and I look at it and I take them away afterwards I don't want them to mix with my um, hook or to tangle with my hook and you can see by the design what I want I want to fly that it's it's narrow this way but extremely wide the other way and this is where it creates this nice uh, movement from the fish perspective I said last film it's gonna be a complicated one to tie it's not that complicated but there's quite a few things you need to think about to make this fly swim the right way 
you don't you need to cut the the ostrich first good quality but you need to cut the ostrich the right way uh, you can't put too much wing on you need to brush out the dubbing so you get some hackles on the under the fly not too much on the top that's why i brush them down like that and you will have to do the hackles carefully not too many turns uh, because you use three different tackles okay i can say this ostrich ear uh, or this peacock ear is not really straight but uh, it's got the perfect tips uh, when it comes in the water it will straighten out like this and um, i'm happy with this fly a couple of two long ones here And I tied a very modern, I would say, uh, version on one of the most classic hair wing flies through all times, the Willy Gun. It's taken so many fish. It's just a superb color combination for water with a little bit of tint of a color to it. Okay, I think I will stay inside here. <laughs> Keep on tying flies. I'm not gonna go out and do any more casting. It's too bad weather. I'll, I save my strength for chasing big salmon in bad weather this summer coming up. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy uh, the ideas behind the samurais, uh, uh, sorry, the butterflies and that you will also like Quite a few of my friends catch a few fish on them on this summer coming up. So with that, I want to thank you for watching. And um, I hope there was some uh, small tricks in here for all of you. And uh, thank you very much for all the positive feedback we get on the films. And also on the fly packs and the fly material packs coming with pattern of the month so thank you very much for watching and uh, i'll see you next month with a totally different fly